what happened. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. A little, uh, a little, little mistake on the music. Uh, you know, could blame the uh, sound guy. Oh, that's me. <laughs> um, what's going on? How you doing? Hey, can you change the view? Can you change? Oh, the, uh... I can change the view. Let me change the view. We'll go with I... uh. No, no, I had the right view. How's that? All right. I'm Looks telling good. you, it's the right view. I can see you in full color. Sorry, I didn't mean to blow up. How you doing? Yeah, you're getting a little a little snippy right at the beginning, just like that, out of the gate with your green shirt. Oh, look at that. Oh, green nice. shirt. We didn't, even, didn't even plan that tonight, did we? No, we didn't plan that at all. Scott, what are you drinking tonight for the nightcap with the Land Geek guys? For nightcap with the Land Geek guys, I'm, uh, I got my trusty old maker's mark. If you're nothing, you're consistent. Boring. <laughs> I didn't want to say boring. I took a little Basil Hayden. I poured it in this container, added a few tea bags, and voila, I got some whiskey uh, whiskey tea, homemade. Yeah, did you, did you Pinterest that or what? I mean, I, I don't understand. I was in Boston, and, and, and we were at a place getting some uh, – some, my, my our daughter was at the, at, the, at the game, and we went to this place and got some uh, – uh, what was it pulled pork and stuff and they said hey this is a great drink try it and i was like wow it knocked my socks off but i added a little flavor i had a little uh a twist i put some uh, cinnamon instead of regular tea in there cinnamon tea nice so here's to you now we may have some new viewers we're in a new format tonight we're in the uh the other facebook group right where we have lots of people here who are probably going who are these guys and why are they wearing funny robes and what are they doing on our channel can you tell them what we're here for yeah, well, we have eight viewers, so that's got a ton. It's, it's growing. It'll grow exponentially when we tell them who our guest is, so let's keep going. Oh, that's for sure. Yes, uh, we are Scott Bosman and Mike Zano. We are the Land Geek Guys, and uh, we decided a few months ago that uh, this this community just was taking itself a little bit too seriously, and we needed to you know, sit down at the end of the day with a drink and, and have a little fun and talk land investing. So that's why we're here. I love it. I always say, like, we bring content, you know, but we bring a lot of fun, right? It's 10, look at this, 1034 on the East Coast, you know, right? So you got to have a real, real, we found that there's people that like to burn the midnight oil. They like to come home. They like to work in on the land business because there's, you know, no set time. You can do this anytime. So why not uh, join them and bring a little content, right? That's exactly right. I, I think it's gone over pretty well. I Go think here. it's gone over great. We've had like, 50 episodes uh we're getting picked up by uh youtube uh red you know right after the cobra kai series they they called us up so i know it's the same joke every week sorry but uh it's a new group they didn't hear it yet i just had a vision of you and your red robe facing off against ralph macchio he's the yeah. real bully okay i don't want to i don't want to ruin well, the show. don't ruin the, don't but ruin the show he's a real bully i'm sorry spoilers People could say like, you know, like you're Johnny and I'm Daniel. Like, look at it. there. There we are. Maybe that's it. I've heard people say that about us. That I'm Johnny and you're Daniel. Right. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> so listen, <laughs> we're here to talk about land investing. So uh, what's new with you this week? Anything going on in the land world? For, <laughs> Aaron Williams says he may start a 3 a.m. show. Hey, Aaron, I've been there. I've been up, maybe not 3 a.m. I've been up at 5 a.m. doing land. Oh, he could do that because he milks the cows at 3 a.m. It's a distinct yeah, right. advantage he has over there in that Amish country. So the Amish we... country of Indiana. Uh, so, yeah, let's talk land investing. I also want to encourage uh, the, 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 the viewers tonight. You know, th this is about you guys. So please be interactive. Please ask questions, uh, whether it's completely on topic or completely off. Or if you want to make fun of Mike a little bit, that's fine. Uh, you know, that's why we're here. Sorry with me. I know you're a good sport. <laughs> you really are. So how, how's your week been, Mike? It's been In great with land. Great. We just had a term sale go through. I always tell people, right. Sometimes they think we manufacture these, uh, these terms, right. Um, of these numbers, but the reality is anybody who's been doing this business for any length of time realizes this is the real deal. And I always say it's like 
pan for gold, like you're shaking. You're going to get flake after flake after flake, but then every so often you get a nugget. And it just happens. I mean, so typically we'll buy a piece of land for, I'd say, around twelve to $1,500 and sell for about 6000 on terms. This one we happen to sell for 9000 So it's just a, a little bit of a nugget. It's a good return. Um, it's a great deal. Even with my sales team being paid, we'll be all out in six months. So we'll have just complete profit. We'll, it's going to be, uh, it's awesome. So the That's land amazing. business is phenomenal. Good deal. Good for you. That's awesome. Here we got some. We got some terms deal, or we got we got some questions. You got it. some terms deals. Let's hear them. It's been a long day for me. I I. Uh, I'll carry you. I got you. No, uh, Aaron Williams. <laughs> Aaron Williams cows SMH. You know what SMH stands for? I don't want to guess. I know what I might think it stands for, but I probably shouldn't say. Shake my head. Is SMH. that a good thing? Oh, because we made fun of the cows, and he's up milking the cows yeah. and doing a show. Here's a, here's a question from Michael. Uh, Michael, I need to know how to pronounce your last name. A I L L O N. It's French. Um, Elon. What, what percentage of your deals are terms deals? Right. Great question. Now, I will say that traditionally we say that it's about a seventy thirty split. Right across the business, if you were to poll people, you'd probably find that about seventy percent of the deals are terms deals. And why? Because there's most people out there that can afford these. We make it so attractive. Like. Literally, people spend more money, and I tell this to people, right? More money each month going to Starbucks and Dunkin' Donuts or wherever you have out there in Wisconsin or whatever they have in Bearland. Both those things. Oh, okay. I, I wasn't sure. I, uh, you spend more money in coffee every month than you will on a land deal. So um, it's just so attractive, of course, that our numbers would be higher on that, right? But there are other people that are going to come and say, hey, well, we'd like a cash discount or, or what's the cash price? So we can accommodate those as well. So it's a good mix. In fact, Scott Todd has a whole segment in flight school talking about how to keep the business refueled with income through this process. I think what a lot of people do too, Mike, is um, they, might, they may start out with more cash deals than terms deals. It might be 70, 30 the other way when they're first getting started. That's kind of- I did that. Yeah, I did that too. My first year, I did more cash deals than terms deals. And then about 15 months into it, I kind of did a uh, uh, 180 and went the other direction. So uh, that that's the beauty. Do what you want and do what you need to do to to move the needle. Everybody forward. comes here with a different set of scenario. I was 40 grand in debt, so I needed to quickly uh, get rid of that debt. So I bought I call it junk lots. Nothing wrong with them. I just talk about land that's you can buy it for three, four, five hundred dollars and double your money. Why do I call it junk lots? It sounds good. I don't know. It's because it's cheap land that you can flip and double your money. It was great land nothing wrong with it but we paid off our debt with junk lots yeah that's amazing that is really amazing good for you here's to you mike zano oh typically when people say good for you it's not positive just so you know no that's totally i'm just going very, around in my part of the world good for you is like yeah good for you oh come on no i'm serious <laughs> good, on, good on you good on hmm I think it's time for our guest. I, this guy deserves more time than, than usual, right? We got He's bigger than life. We got to bring him up. What do you think? Yes, we have a, we have a, yes, we have a question from Gary Frazier. All right, we, we got to hold off on the guest. We got questions. No, no, no. Um, uh, okay, so this is addressed to you, Mike. Mike, uh -oh. uh, what do you mean when you say, when my salespeople get paid? When you were talking right. about the example, good, profitable deal, explain your sales team, please. That's a great question. That's a great question. So here's the thing. Land investing is our niche, but there's a niche within the niche, the micro niche. And what, what is that? We don't do the business. We use systems. We use automation. We use delegation. And we create a team, a very cost-effective, yet very uh, just, you know, it's a real team. I land investing. What do I say, Scott? What is it? Team sport. You complete me. Look at that. You complete me. Check that off the list. You complete me segment. Check Done. It off. Uh, so movie. land investing is a team sport. So we have a sales team and they get a percentage of the sale. So that's what they work on. They work on commission. So I, we don't have to, my wife and I don't have to talk to the people that want to buy land from us. We have our sales agent do that. And then they present the offers and that's very simple. We can use, Voxer on the phone and communicate, and I can do that while I'm drinking Basil Hayden infused with cinnamon tea at three in the afternoon. At, well, I don't want to paint the wrong picture. <laughs> oh no, I wouldn't want to do that. 
I would never. Is this uh, where you say good for you? No, uh, yeah, yeah, good for you. Uh, <laughs> there it is. Aaron, Aaron Williams says uh, Aaron Williams equates that to the middle finger, apparently. Like the middle finger, good for you. That's Aaron, not. That's not Aaron knows them, Aaron knows them, viewers out there. I can't see fa the Facebook comments, Scott can, but can you weigh in on this? If someone says good for you, does that typically mean good for you? I I don't know. Laura's saying yes, but she's just Team Scott. I think. Oh, she says it all the time, so I guess I must be. <laughs> I, okay, I don't know. Scott, can you introduce our guest? Let's do this. Yeah, let's do this. So this is very exciting because. Uh, more exciting than working with me? More exciting than just you and me. There was no guest last week, so <laughs> you were moving down a little bit. The week before that, we had Damien Lupo on. That was a great episode for anybody who wants to go back and learn about QRPs. That was but a today, pretty deep one. That was a deep one. The first half was pretty deep, and then it got a little silly, but that's all right. So tonight, uh, tonight we have Wes Schaefer, the sales whisperer, on with us. <coughs> I'm excited. Bring him up. Yes, I'm bringing him up. I'm going to promote him to panelist. Here he comes. Oh. <laughs> there he is. He's gonna swing. Oh, I got to play the music again. <laughs> yes. Wait a minute. Oh. I got to unmute him. Hold on. Yeah, there we hear. go. You're unmuted. So, <laughs> no music, man. What the? <laughs> I think I should have played the theme song from The Sopranos. That would have been more apropos, right? <laughs> you would have no, no, for me, man, you got to play The Dukes of Hazard. Come on. Oh, Great man. show. Great show. <laughs> Boss Hog. I love it. Love that show. Wes, where are you from? There's a little southern uh, accent in there. Yeah, originally from Baton Rouge. Went to high school in Houston. And then traveled the world with the Air Force. Nice. You caught the twang, the southern twang, Scott. You, you caught, caught it. Twang. I caught it. Yes, I did. <laughs> Wes, I want to read something. By the way, the saleswhisperer.com, your website. I, I love this more about the sales whisperer because there's one part in here I love because I, not only because I have a hard time pronouncing it, but because it's just, it's just an awesome statement. So it says, uh, this is more about the sales whisperer. It says, ruthlessly, look at, I'm already having a hard time. These R's, ruthlessly pragmatic sales trainer, marketing consultant, keynote speaker, copywriter, Infusionsoft expert, and here's the word, doer. <laughs> I did it. I said the R, doer. Uh, doer. Doer. I love that. I love that one line, that one word. That word is awesome. So I just wanted to read that because, a, I wanted to see if I could get the R, which I had more hard time with the Ruthless than I did the R, but B, because I love that. That's awesome. <laughs> well, thank you. I wrote it myself. I Excellent. think I was sober then, too, but hey. Above I, that's a great picture, too. Uh, a picture of uh, you. Uh, it's at the graduation of the Air Force Academy, correct? Oh, yeah. And yeah. Uh, Wow. Very good. Very cool. Sneaking in. No. So I think she can sneak in. I'm going to no. pull this camera around on her. <laughs> Let's do it. Oh. She so doesn't like my robe whisper. or hat. Ah, right, come on. It's total New England. Love it. So I want to, you know, this is great having you on here. In fact, I had the pleasure of meeting you finally in person at the, uh, at the, uh, at the boot camp, right? Where, where was that, Scott? We were, I, we've been to so many. I forget which boot camp. That was Vegas. That was Vegas. We All met right. Shannon, we met Shannon and Matt in, uh, in San Antonio, and then we met uh, Wes in Vegas. That's right. That's right. And you know, uh, you spoke a little bit there, right? And I know that you probably could have gone on for a longer time than you did, but I really liked that. I really actually loved that. Um, uh, what, what you were talking about, you know, the fact that there are people out there that we encounter in our life growing up that kind of misrepresent, right? What a salesperson should be, right? And, uh, right. and it gives them a bad name. And can you talk a little bit about that? Just a brief, not the, you don't have to give the whole speech, but I, I really like that. I like the fact that, you know, you talked about professionalism and whatnot. Yeah, well, Scott and Mark do a great job with that as well. You know, it's at the end of the day, a professional salesperson is really solving a pain, right? They are, we're a bridge, right? A broker, a go-between of helping people uh, solve a problem. And, you know, with this land, uh, as our mailings are picking up, I mean, people are, are responding, they're accepting offers, we're getting them on the phone, you know, they're, they're holding on to something uh, for too long. It, it's a pain, even if it's not big dollars. It's, it's an issue. It's something right. that you're looking at, you know, for a short time, I was a stockbroker, you know, years ago, and they talk about, you know, throwing good money after bad, right? And 
they always say, you know, cut your losses, right? Take that, take that first deal. That's your best deal. You know, right. things are only going to unwind and get worse after that. And so to be able to help somebody, they're getting this paper every month or a couple of times a year and they're looking at it, it's piling up on their desk and it's just reminding them of what an albatross that thing is, right? Hanging around their neck. And so, so that's buying it from somebody, right? Selling it to someone. Well, that's somebody that, look, when, when you're selling a $4,000 piece of property on terms, you know, this person, this is a blue collar person that thinks that land ownership, thinks the American dream is, is beyond their reach. And then all of a sudden you make it possible. Right. Okay. So you need to understand where you fit in this equation, where you fit in this ecosystem uh, and, and be proud of it. Right. There's, there's no reason um, to be ashamed of being in sales as long as you're doing things right. As long as you're telling the truth, as long as you're not pressuring people, you know, and driving a hard bargain is not the same as pressuring someone. Okay. When you know your numbers, stick to your numbers. You know, pressure is lying to them, uh, shaming them. You know, hey, come on, Mike. What? I mean, a real, you got to talk to your wife. You know, a real man makes his own decision. He doesn't talk to his wife. What are you, man? Come on, press real hard. The third copy is yours. Let's get this deal done, right? That's that's manipulation. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know, if, oh, you got to talk to your wife? Fantastic. Would you like me to wait? I, is she home now? I can wait. You right. know, and, and so telling the truth like that is fine. So, yeah. Understand where you're coming from, understand your role and, and embrace it. And because you know what I always tell people, your bank account is a direct reflection of the good or bad choices that you've made. That's all. Right. 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 You know, you, you got out of forty thousand dollars in debt because you hustled and you put deals together. You solved people's pains and you got paid for it. You know what? When a heart surgeon, you know, a friend of ours just had a a uh, double was a double bypass or two stents put in 99% blockage. That doctor solved his pain. Yep. Shouldn't the doctor get paid for it? Should the doctor feel bad about getting paid for solving that guy's chest pain? <laughs> no, he gets paid very well. Mm -hmm. We should enjoy and appreciate being paid well for solving real estate pain. I love it. You know, I used to feel kind of weird when I first started buying land from people and they'd ask, you know, I would afraid they're going to ask me, what was I going to do with it? And I was like, oh, it was just to me at the very beginning, it was nerve wracking. What if they what if they know I'm going to turn around and sell it? Or, you know, and and I got all worried. And the reality is when I real when I when I embraced the transparency and, and, and told them exactly what I was going to do, it made it easier. When I told people, you know, listen, I work with other investors. This was going to happen. Sometimes I sell it. And they were like, you know what? They'd, I could physically hear them take a deep breath in and relax. And they'd be like, I didn't want to cut it. If I was to sell it a loss, you know, for what we paid for it to someone, I'd want it to be someone like you. They literally say that. And yeah. it's so different than in the beginning. I'm worried. Like I got to do I have to think of this concocted reason like, Oh yeah, we're going to enjoy it. My wife and I know we're not going to enjoy it. We're not going to ever see it. It's yeah. just uh, it's an investment for us. But I think that's true. That truth, that transparency, uh, that, that truly uh, it's a game changer. Well yeah, there's a book out there. They talk about like red ocean, blue ocean. You know, red is like, you know, red from blood, right? From the sharks just attacking. And the blue ocean is, it's huge. There's, you can't, you can't sail all the oceans, right? There's so much opportunity out there. And so if you're hanging on to something, you know, there's a thing called a monkey's paw. And it's literally how they catch monkeys in the wild. They'll have this cage, you know, the uh, uh, little finger uh, yes. handcuffs, you, know, you put it in the harder you pull, the tighter it gets. <laughs> yeah. So it's the same thing. They'll have a cage and they'll put an apple in there or some food and the monkey will reach in and grab it. And he can't get his hand out with a fist. If he lets go and shrinks his hand, the hand comes right out. But instead the monkey grabs it and will not let go. And it starts screaming and going crazy. And they walk up and they club the damn thing and capture the monkey. Because it won't let go. It thinks this is it. Oh, this this two-acre parcel in Mojave County is the deal. I, <laughs> I, I, I can't let go of this thing. <laughs> I got 10 acres in Florida, man. I, gotta, I can't let this thing go. I can't tell anybody about it because they'll steal it from me. Right. You know, it's like, dude, there's so many. Just, just tell them the truth. Right. Like they say, you don't have to have a good memory if you tell the truth. Yeah, it's yeah. true. You know, and uh, 
That's why we don't make a breakup our, our business on one deal. This, you know, once you recognize and embrace the fact that there's 10 more deals coming down the pike, it liberates you because you're not worried about this one deal. You know, you, you speak the truth, you stick to your numbers. If it doesn't work out, um, oh, well, you know, there's another one coming down and that person may convert in the future. Right. Uh, you know, so yeah, it's definitely amazing. Right. You, you <laughs> never doubt you walk over to the light switch and flip the switch and the lights and the fan come on. Well, if you mail a bunch of letters every day, you get replies and offers are accepted. <laughs> I mean, it's, it, it's not, you know, 0. 0.02 seconds. Right. But, but they come, you know. But you got to turn the lights on. You got to take action. You got to be a doer, right? You got to be a doer. Do the work. Yeah. Do the work. There's the word. Do a. Do a, baby. It's like it was Scott. Hey, you know what? <laughs> I think I think it, I think this is a good time. Is it? Yeah, I, I think it really is. I think Wes will get a kick out of this if he hasn't seen it yet. Wes, this is a segment we like to call the Boston Laga segment of the week. <laughs> oh, have a Laga. The Laga. I uh, got a stout. Tastes yeah, like stout. peanut butter. You so, got a stout so, and you have liquor infused with tea. I don't I don't know yeah, if I can talk right. to you anymore. You said it was kind of like a Manhattan. I heard that word. <laughs> I said kind of, but real men, they drink their whiskey neat. I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> <I'm> just <laughs> <of> water. <laughs> All right. So anyway, uh, in, this, in this segment, Wes, the community learns a new Bostonian word or a word that is commonly mispronounced by Bostonians. Okay. <laughs> oh, boy. Here uh, we go. So it works like this. Mike, uh, I spell a word. Okay. And then you say the word. Okay. Simple. And, and, and tonight, actually, tonight I'm actually going to spell a word uh, that relate. It could relate to the land business, actually. Oh boy. There, there may not be a lot of people who who buy land in this state, but there may be a few. So. Oh boy. I'd like you to say this word for me. Are you ready? I hope I get it right. A R K A. N S A S. Arkansas? Arkansas. 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 What's hot about that? <laughs> I'll drink to Arkansas. Here's the Arkansas. Or Arkansas. Here's the Arkansas. Arkansas. It's oh, not man. Arkansas? Arkansas. <laughs> uh, that was a good segment. That was a good one. That was awesome. Wes, I got a I got a question for you. I, I love how you talk about the selling's a calling, questioning is a process, and a sale may be the solution. Serving, uh, serving. serving is the purpose, right? Serving. Selling, calling, serving is the purpose. Okay, and then questioning, questioning is the process. I missed one, and then a sale, a may, sale be. may be the solution. Did you send that to them? No. Okay, Shannon was just asking me about that today. Just today. No, I follow you. I, I study you. Followers. <laughs> so look at I'm gonna look at the I got a couple questions. The first one is about number one, selling is a calling. Because listen, some people that come to this business, right? They're building a business model, and they may in the future, like we do, we we have someone that embraces that position, and selling really is their calling. But in the beginning, it may not be my calling. It's something that I have to do because I don't have that person there yet. So, how, what would you kind of advice would you give to that person? So it's you know the business is really what called them here, right? Which I guess. I'll let you go on that level, but it's not truly, they truly didn't come to it out of maybe a feeling to be the salesperson, but yet they're in that role. So what kind of advice would you, you, you give to them if you're digging what I'm saying? You know, they're not initially yeah. coming to it from that perspective. Well, but think about it. And I realize they may not. Um, like, um, you know, a friend of ours in the group, uh, he's a nurse. Okay. Right. His calling was to serve people in in healthcare right but as he got deeper into it he realizes hey to to build the future that he wants for his family and the lifestyle that he wants he's got to up his game he he's investing in this business right so so deep down something clicked and he realized like, like you mike i mean you're a firefighter you know that that's not sales Right. You're right. going to throw some gear on, get a big axe, knock down some walls, you know, go home and cook some chili. 
Hang out with the fellas and watch the SPN. <laughs> and infuse your whiskey with tea. Right. And so, but then you're like, I, I want to play a bigger game, right? right. I want to continue to serve. You're, you're still in that role, but it's like, I got to, to, to reach higher goals. So something was nagging at you that realized that made you realize being an entrepreneur, getting into business for myself. Cause that that's the kicker is that when you're in business for yourself, the number one job of a business owner is to market their business. Okay. Right. That's sales. Sales and marketing are two sides of the same coin. You know, nothing happens until a sale is made. My, my old CEO used to say, you know, sales is the straw that stirs the drink. Okay. So you can have all this great marketing, but if you can't sell, if you can't write a good Craigslist ad, if you can't answer the phone and respond to a, to a response or an, an inquiry, if you can't reply to that email, each of those are little sales. You know, right. so if you don't embrace that role, then you're not going to have as much success as you can. You know, so you need to understand that if you're in this business, then you're in business for yourself. So you've been called to be in sales, believe it or not. Excellent. I love that. I, I, I love, I love that whole, uh, you know, kind of, it, you know, in a, in a, in a way it reminds me of Scott and I were talking about a book, the go-giver, you know, about, you know, and I, I love that book and it kind of, cause at the end, when you say a sale may be the solution, cause it may not be right. It, it just may not be the right piece of land for this person. Uh, yeah. And the last thing we want to do is put them in a piece of land that's going to end up being wrong for them because it's just not going to serve either of us very well. So I love that. I love that last part. I think that's probably what reminds me most of that whole idea of the go-giver of just being truthful, honest, and, and questioning and, 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 and making sure this is the right step for them. And I think that gives you a lot of clout, right? Oh yeah. And I, and, and I know Bob Burke, I've had him on the sales podcast twice. He's one of a few that have been on twice. Really? I'll, I'll have to find that one. Yeah. I mean, he's a good dude and, and, and that's, and that's true. Right. And, I remember sitting in boot camp and hearing Scott and Mark talk about, you know, a 90 day money back guarantee, a 365 day exchange. You know, when you, it's, it's called a risk reversal, right? You're taking away the objections. You're eliminating the risk because what is sales? Sell, selling is a transference of a feeling and that feeling is confidence, right? So you're, you're giving them the confidence that they're taking the right action. And so you better be doing the right things if you're offering a 90 day money back guarantee, a 365 day exchange, you know, because if you're manipulative, if you're cutting corners, if you're lying to people, if you're pressuring people, you know, I've got a whole thing, the ABCDE cycle of sales, you know, and rookies think that the sale is the end goal, but and they think of, of a pipeline, right? Left to right, shove stuff in or a funnel, pack a lot of stuff in the top, maybe something will crawl, fall out the bottom. But when you think of it as a cycle, you're attracting, you're bonding, you're converting, right? you're making that sale, then you're delivering. You're over delivering, you're delivering this wow experience. Then you endear yourself to them and they and now you're attracting more business, right? Nice. You two have been nice. in this a lot longer than me. I bet you've had people come back and either buy multiple properties from you or send a friend or family member to say, Hey, you know, my, my mom, my wife, or, you know, my wife, my, you know, my cousin, my uncle, they bought my next door neighbor bought from you. And, you know, we want some land too. I bet y'all have had that happen. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Cause you, you treat them right. The sale, just like getting married, right? The, the wedding day, you know, 23 years ago, Shannon and I got married. Was that it? Were, were, were we done? Okay, it's all easy now. Or is that when the real work begins? Mm -hmm. Right? So same thing. You make the sale. That's like having your wedding vows. Well, okay, great. You have a party, got a band, drink some wine, had some, you know, steak. Great. Fantastic. Now what? Now the honeymoon's over. The roof is leaking. You know, the kids are sick. Water heaters busted. What do you do? You know, so it's that understanding. You got to, you got to, you got to run through the finish line, right? And when you deliver and endear, it gets easier and easier and easier. The sales come faster, uh, yeah. come at higher dollar, less resistance, more profitable, 
everybody's happy. That's awesome. I, I think, I think uh, I'm going to, I'm going to share a quote that Andy Wilmers has put up because uh, I think this kind of ties in. So Andy says, I've sold to three people so far and each one was truly excited to buy the land. The only thing I had to do was put the opportunity in front of them. I didn't have to upsell the land. I told the truth about the properties, good and bad. It happened that the land was exactly what they were looking for, opportunity. Yeah. It, it, you need to realize that you are not your client. Yep. Okay. And I learned this in 1998 when I was selling mobile homes in Mobile, Alabama. Okay. I didn't live in a mobile home. I remember this, this lady came in. She said, we'd like to look at some of your trailers. Well, your manufactured homes. <laughs> and I was like, and I was like, you're the one buying it. You can call it a trailer as long as you buy it from me. Okay. And so even now, like I got, I got a reply from a guy on email, you know, like, is this legitimate? You know, and he's misspelling legitimate. <laughs> I, I know this is one of my like third cousins back in Louisiana, you know, shooting frogs with his 22 off his front porch while he sips Pabst Blue Ribbon with a big dip of Copenhagen, right? Is this real? Is this land offered legitimate? Okay. And it's like, <laughs> yes, it is. But I, I would not buy to hold and own a, a $4,000 piece of land in Mojave County, Arizona. I wouldn't. Right. It doesn't mean it's not right for them. Right. Okay. They want it. I'm there to fulfill. And you know what? And there, there is something about knowing that you own something. Most people don't own anything. Okay. Yeah. They're, pay, they're paying on everything. There's more. The bank owns it. The, you know, they own the mortgage. They own the, the car. You know, okay. Maybe they own their $500 Ford Focus, you know, but it's not going to appreciate, you know, it's, it's something that takes money from them. So you need to understand that just because, you're helping uh, complete a transaction on something that you yourself may not want. Doesn't mean there's no value there. When I was selling trailers, I was happy selling trailers. 1998, I was 28 years old, I made hundred thousand dollars. My first year, right? We, we had we had one and a half kids. I had two kids, right? So Matthew was born. Then I started that job. My my rent was what three hundred sixty five dollars a month. A little two bedroom apartment in Mobile, Alabama. You know, a hundred thousand dollars back then is like one hundred forty-five thousand dollars today. Right. I felt wonderful. I didn't feel like I was ripping anybody off because something like thirty percent of of home sales are mobile homes, manufactured homes. Mm -hmm. Right. So I was feeling a need. And I was happy to do it. So and so people are proud of what you're doing. It's yours. What was that Scott? I didn't catch no, it. I just say, you know, people are thankful for that. They're, yeah. you know, you're fulfilling a need. I mean, you, we, Mike, you've gotten thank you letters from, from buyers, you know, so yeah. long, uh, you know, you're they're They're thankful that you are there to help them move forward. So it's pretty awesome. There, there is, there is something about this pride of ownership. You know, they, they've done studies where they've taken, you know, two, two bottles of wine, Right. And I know this is not one, but they, you know, two bottles of wine and they put them in a cup and they, you know, and they go, OK, hey, look, this here. And, and they connect their brains up with those probes. Like, you know, you see they, they're doing science experiments and they're like, this is a four hundred dollar bottle of wine. You import it from France, <laughs> carry it on the back of the Vestal Virgins, you know, I mean, and, the, and the, their pleasure receptors are going off firing in their brain and they're like, Hey, this is like a $3 bottle of wine from the grocery store. And, and the, and there's not as much pleasure um, firing in the brain. And then they're like, they, they pull the, the covers away and they're like, it's the same, it's the same wine. Right. But because they believed it was something bigger and better, they felt better about themselves. They had a better experience. So when somebody, even if it's a $4,000 piece of land, the fact that they own it, right. And it's theirs. They can go shoot guns out there if they want. They can ride their quads out there, but it's theirs. There's yep. something about, and you know, that's what's different about America around the rest of the world. When you own property, you own it, you know, up to the freaking troposphere, down to the center of the earth. 
-hmm. No other country has that type of real estate um, power. And so, and there is something about owning your own. So when somebody can say, this is mine, that, that pride of ownership, you know, it's, it's, it's powerful. And they may not ever have that. If they don't see your ad on Craigslist, they may think I'll, I'll never be an owner. You know, I'm going to live in this three bedroom, two house, two bed, two bathroom, you know, house in the suburbs jammed up in the city, you know, never have something of my own. So you need to understand what's going on in the minds of your customers. Yeah, uh, the value that we're delivering. Yeah. And help them embrace that. Awesome. Awesome. Look at look who popped up. You know why? Because my glass is empty. Woo! Mine. Mine is too. Matt, we're boat. ready. Wait, where's that official sign, uh, Scott? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. The official, the official. Oh, uh, I just finished off some Glimmerangy. The Good. official, the, the digital sign. Where is that thing? Oh, here it is. It's the refill segment. Yay. <laughs> Where we all get to drink just a little bit more for the end of the day. Fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. Yes. All right. Take your glass, pour it in just a touch. Keep it neat. Just a hair. Just for the kids at home. <laughs> and that is good. What are we Thank drinking you. to, Matt? Uh, I'm drinking to my Cub Scout season being over. I have 72 nice. kids. I spend hours and hours and hours. We got our finally final thing tonight. And I'm done, and I can focus more on land. Are you the Cub Master? Is that what it's called? I am the Cub Master. Yeah, it's it's ugly. Oh, nice. Sure. Good for you. Yeah. Good so, you. whatever yeah. you're doing, cheers, pros. Cheers. Thank you, Matt. We'll have you up for the outro in just a few minutes. Oh, it's so good. Oh, isn't that good? It's so good. <laughs> so we got we, what happened? We got a couple other segments we got to squeeze in here, Scott, don't we? we? Well, we got the Facebook uh, quote or question of the week. Uh, the Facebook Facebook group was a little bit quiet this week, but we're going to do the question of the week. You ready? All right, we're ready. All right, it's a question. We're going to have to answer it. This is a question, and you are going to have to answer it. Here we go. Oh, this is from John Smith, and he's just starting uh, out. He says, I'm just starting out on this journey and I was taking a look at the secret county list in the investors toolkit. I was wondering how are those counties selected? I was curious just in case I wanted to take a look at counties that were not on that list down the road in my state. Awesome. Well, here's a reality, right? Those are areas where we've done deals. We've all done deals in those areas before. And, uh, that's why they're there. There's land deals there to be had. Now, if you want to do a deal in your area, most likely you're not probably in an area that fits the model really well, but the caveat being you might be. We talked to some people who do live near Mojave, Arizona, who do, do live in areas where this land uh, business will work very well. But you got to understand the methodology, like how we do it. There's over 3,000 counties. So how do you pick the right one? Well, you need to learn the process. Flight school is great, right? Scott Todd goes right at the beginning and shows you you know, okay, there's these secret county lists in the uh, toolkit, but there's a way that you can configure whether or not an area is good or not. And this is, you know, a really good skill to have because then you can go feed yourself. You can go find new areas. So that list just means one thing and one thing alone. We've done deals there. I guess it means two things. And there's deals to be had there. So, yeah, Great. most definitely. Very good, Michael. Well, thank you, Scott. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, Wes, I want to touch on something you said a little bit earlier. So, so we were talking about the person who, you know, maybe maybe this nurse, for instance, who uh, who who felt that he uh, needs a little bit more in his life. Yes, his passion is patient care, much like mine is. I'm a physical therapist. I love patient care. But three years ago, I turned 40. I had a midlife crisis and realized, ah, I got four boys. It's hard to put groceries on the table. I have no passive income. I need to do something with my life uh, to bring in more opportunity, more security. Uh, so, but at the same time, I was not a salesperson. I'd never been in sales in my life or business in my life or never done, never marketed anything in my life. So what advice would you give to someone who is, who maybe thinks they have the potential to do this, but <clears throat> needs some type of, of guidance or resource or, you know, training or practice to become confident in talking to that person on the phone 
about these properties? Well, Henry Ford is a household name because of his process, right? I, I forget, I think it was like 1913, somewhere around there. Uh, you know, cars, had, he didn't invent cars, right? It was Daimler Chrysler or, or Daimler Chrysler, or Daimler Benz, you know, that invented the first automobile. So this was decades after the automobile had been invented that Henry Ford figured out, hey, if I streamline the process, I, I can make more cars, I can lower the price, uh, and I can have higher margin. He even paid his people, he was paying like $5 a day when the going wage was $3 a day. So he paid more money, produce a better quality car at a lower price because he had a process, okay? And my very first paying sales training client was an architect that was going out on his own. He's like, I know how to be an architect. I don't know how to drum up business. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what, what Scott and Mark have created is the process. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, follow the script far too often. People get in trouble, especially as entrepreneurs, when they get too creative. You need to be a product of the product. Okay. When I got into sales training, you know, I, I paid money to become a licensee of a guy that had been doing this for, you know, 20 years. And I was a student first, then I became a client. And, and I just followed his process, right? I'd already used what he taught me to be successful in my career, in my day job. Then I, then I just used it and applied it to grow my own business and created, you know, the whole sales whisper thing. So if you can follow the script, follow the process, basically color inside of the lines, you know, color inside of the lines that have been created mm -hmm. and you will have a positive ROI and maybe it takes you two years or three years or whatever, instead of three months, or, fine. It, it is mapped out. I've never seen anything this proven and really this low risk. You know, even if you invest in, in the boot camp and you invest in the flight school, yes, it's, it's thousands of dollars, but you know, go buy a subway store, go buy a, or whatever. Some friends of mine just, I didn't even know it. It, it was a, a, a gun store here in town. They closed. I didn't even know they were closed. I'm like, oh my gosh, how much did that cost? Mm -hmm. I've owned businesses that have closed. I've invested in apartment complexes. I built spec houses. I traded stocks and bonds and commodities and futures. Uh, I've invested in, I had a, a, a franchise, you know, made money, lost a lot of money, mm -hmm. you know? And so, okay. So you spend 10 or $12,000, you spend $500 a month. Well, okay, fine. The process is, is laid out. You know, so color inside of the lines and you will succeed in this. Yeah. yeah it's repetitive. It's redundant. You know, and, and that's the actually the fact that it's boring is the good news. But you're right. I think a lot of times what people do is they, you know, they it's just something about the mind. It wants to kind of create new things and wants yeah. to take it out, ha outside. Right. Have a boring business where money just comes in <laughs> and then go take up Brazilian jujitsu. Go learn windsurfing. <laughs> and, and get you know? your blue belt. Go get your blue belt. Go go <laughs> rattlesnake hunting. You know, go go bring your excitement through your hobbies. You know, and, and there, there was a story too. I don't know if it's true, but I think it is I, I, about Henry Ford. You know, he was an entrepreneur, right? He's you know, let's build the next thing. Let's go. Let's let's climb that next mountain. And you know, especially back then. Uh, it took a long time to create an ad campaign, right? You had to hire the agency. They had to do all the type, you know, the font and everything. It wasn't just WordPress or, you know, desktop publishing, hire a VA in the Philippines, knock something out in 30 minutes, post it on Instagram and boost it. You know, it was like weeks and months of planning to run this ad campaign. And, and he came in and said, hey, you know, I, I think the public's tired of this. You know, it's, it's worn out. We, we, we got to shift our message. We got to go a different direction. And they're like, Mr. Ford, we haven't even launched 
the advertising campaign. You know, he was worn out on the, just the planning of it. You know, unfortunately, he had a team that just said, look, go, go, go streamline the assembly line. We're working on the ad campaign. And so you, you got it. It is not sexy. It is not sexy building, um, you know, proxies and setting up IP addresses and, and setting up uh, your PVAs, you know, for your phone ver verification. It's not sexy writing ads for Craigslist. It's not sexy. It's not sexy replying to emails. Yes, this is a legitimate deal. No, I can't accept that offer. Yes, I'll accept that offer, but I must do our, our due diligence. You know, it's not sexy, right. you know, but do, do you want like high wire, you know, balancing acts while juggling flaming bowling pins? Or do you want money coming in, you know, so you can sleep at night? Because I think we literally get addicted to the, uh, to the chaos. Yeah. You know, we, we don't know how to chill out. You know, enjoy a sunset. Enjoy a hobby, you know, it gets me out of the house for two and a half hours at a time. You know, four to six days a week. I'm just like, oh, middle of the day. People are like, oh, can you meet at noon? Uh, no, I'm going to go learn how to kill somebody and, and not be killed. You know, it'll take me two, <laughs> it's going to take me two and a half hours. So you're going to have to wait. You know? <laughs> So that's my excitement. Then, then I just want, I don't want excitement in my money making. I just want to make money. Right. Right. You know? Just, yeah, just, the fact that it's boring is, allows us to go into stage two. Once we get it down, we begin to take those little parts and outsource them, you know, delegate, automate. Uh, if it was so complicated and, and like you said, like a, a trapeze act, then we wouldn't be able to do that. But since it's so boring and repetitive, we can actually begin to farm it out. Because uh, we know this is going to happen every time, over and over and over again. Yeah, like even the heart surgeon I talked about, even though they make a lot of money, they can't outsource that. Right, right. Even though they're paid very well, they have, they're have they the ones that have to do it. Yeah. You know, oh, look at my baby. Oh, she's doing her dance recital. It's so cute. Beep, 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 beep. Oh, got to go. Too bad I can't stay. Right. Got to go save somebody's life. You know, now that's a calling, right? I'm glad there are people like that, but you still need to understand. And that's, I'm sure that's very exciting. I know that's exciting, right? I know surgeons. I, there, there's a rush in that moment, uh, mm -hmm. but they're still tied to their job. I've worked with a lot of doctors, uh, ophthalmologists, um, cosmetic surgeons, chiropractors, you know, that want out. You know, they're looking for ways to create passive income. They're looking for ways to cut back on their hours. They're looking for ways to uh, create some, uh, you know, re redundancy, some, you know, uh, additional streams of income. So it's, um, you're jumping ahead of the line by figuring this out now. Yeah, for sure. And hey, Wes, can you how to create your own income. Can you explain to the community what Flight School has done for you and Shannon and Matt? I know you started out with the toolkit. Just, yep. just give people a little bit of a, uh, of a viewpoint uh, uh, about what it's done for you. Um, yeah, you know, the interesting thing is I, I've been in you know, sales and marketing for a long time and specifically in working with CRMs and marketing tools. Um, and creating processes and automating things for businesses and hundreds of businesses, um, thousands of businesses, hundreds of industries, 28 countries. And, but seeing the way, the depth and the degree to which Mark and Scott have created systems and processes, I, I've even applied the things I've learned from them into my own business, uh, just getting more aggressive more creative on what can I give away? What can I outsource? Right. But seeing, so seeing my wife get fired up about something, cause she, she helps me in my business on the back end. She's always done the bookkeeping and the accounting and uh, she does the product fulfillment, new clients and stuff. But, um, but that's it. She's like into this. She's, she's researching counties and stuff and seeing my son, you know, he just turned 20 and, to see him get fired up and see that this is something he can do. You know, he can apply himself uh, for a couple of years and literally be set when, you know, with a process, 
uh, and having the support, you know, all of you are accessible. I mean, all of you have been, have taken time out to answer questions and whatnot. So having a system, you know, is so cool. Uh, and, and it's a proven system, right? This isn't like Mark, Mark stayed up, you know, over Christmas and saw an infomercial and bought something, right? He's been doing this since what, 2000? Yeah. You know, eight, 18 years, you know, and Scott, he, he loves, Scott's like, Hey, I, I'm the nerd here. I'm just, you know, blah, blah. And he's just not flashy. And he's like, here's what I did. You know, he was a VP or he was an executive at a big company and replaced his income. He's like, not fancy. And that, that's what, that's what you need to look for in something like this is look at, look for something that takes technique and not talent. Okay. I can never be, I will never beat LeBron James, even in a game of horse. I will never beat Tiger Woods, even at, at, at goofy golf. Okay. Right. <laughs> even at those simple things, they're better than me because they have more talent than I will ever have. Okay. In those, in those sports, but technique, you know, processes anybody, a 20 year old can learn these techniques, these processes. That's the beauty, you know, but then can you be patient enough, disciplined enough to color within the lines, mm -hmm. you know, so seeing how these guys have built, you know, big businesses and then, and you know what, and it's not to say that you can't be creative with this because they've created geek pay. They've created LG pass. So once you're in and you have a stable uh, income stream, you'll be surprised how creative you get. Cause I, I've been blessed by having a, a recurring income stream through software sales that I've done. It frees you up to then explore other things, mm -hmm. you know? So, so don't think this will make you brain dead, but rich, right? It'll, it'll create the income stream that then will free you up to truly explore what it is you want to do. Uh, and then you can really get after it. Uh, because maybe it is you want to get into some type of art or whatever. Maybe, maybe they go the opposite path of you, right, Scott? Maybe now they have the money and they become a physical therapist. They become a chiropractor. A friend of ours became an eye doctor, you know, 40 years old with seven kids, six kids. You know, so this could free you up to go down that path, but you got to, you better stick with it. You know, you better build it first and make it solid, then go explore. It's true. It opens up a window to do things that you love, right? To do things that truly uh, make your life fulfilled. It's really, it's a great path. It really is. Yeah. Scott, what do we have for a final segment? Well, all right. So let's do one question. question. And I'd like okay. to do it to three Give things. Me. Three things. Oh, all right. Question. Okay. Segment. Giveaway. Toast. Just... Four things. Wow. Four let's things. Let's do it. All We're right. Do it real quick. You ready? I'm question. ready. Number one. Question from Chris uh, Grassman. Mike and Wes, do you have a preference for how you communicate with a prospect? Phone, text message, Facebook messenger, email, et cetera. Does it depend on the prospect or do you try to get everyone into a certain channel if you're able? Uh, I'll answer that as a sales trainer and I'll let Scott answer that as a much more experienced land investor. Uh, but I always say we as the salespeople must adjust how we sell to match how the customer prefers to buy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so in that case, you know, you, the argument can be made to be everywhere. Uh, that being said, I love getting their email address. Uh, I love it when, you know, Scott's like, uh, or, or uh, Scott Todd is like, I don't want to talk to people. I want their email address. So he doesn't put his phone number out there, but then others are like, I got my cell phone. I'll text, whatever. So some of this is uh, make sure you capture their info. I'm a big email guy. I love getting their email address uh, because there's tools you can use to, to track them down. But 
you know, I, I want to be, e I want to make it easy for people to give me their money. Yeah, that's exactly right. And I think, you know, I have sold property every way on the phone, via email, via text message, and via Facebook Messenger. Uh, every single way I've sold property. I, I, there, I've sold property without talking to people. So I, I think you're exactly right in that. I think you match with the customer and what they want and what they desire. That's awesome. Awesome. Yeah, you got to get their uh, email for on your buyers list. But uh, again, ease of uh, communication is the way they want to they want to communicate. You know, mirror it and get the sale done. You know, exactly communicate. Right. Don't force them. Yeah, I mean, something I, they don't I, do. I, PayPal is a pain in the ass, and I feel so bad because my wife has to deal with it. She deals with the accounting side of things. But uh, so I turned PayPal off for a little while. I, honey, love of my life, mother of my seven <laughs> children, you say PayPal, PayPal's a pain in the ass. I will just turn it off. And man, like a week later, a guy messages me to buy one of my sales training programs, $750. He's like, hey, you don't take PayPal? I'm like, hold on one second. I'll log in, turn it back on. Like, <laughs> Send me your money, baby. <laughs> I'm going to make it easy for you to give me my money. You know, I can always raise the price of the course to pay for dinner for my wife, take her to a spa, right? Or you know what? Pay a bookkeeper, just take all that stuff off her hands. So right. make, be easy to do business with. Good point. <laughs> all right, Mike, you ready? Ready. Real what quick. Is it? Real quick. Shove it segment of the week. <laughs> what do you got? Oh, oh yeah. That, that one came from uh, Kyle. No, no. Nick, Nick Bond. Bond. Nick Bond. And this is actually something that was on a letter sent back to him on an offer that he sent out. And it said it was addressed to Nick Bond bottom feeder. <laughs> Nick Bond bottom feeder. <laughs> so, uh, it was, you know, uh, it could be worse things in life, right? Here's a reality. We tell people every week, Wes, right? Three to five percent of the people can accept our offer it means that a lot of people aren't going to like it. But you got to have thick skin, right? It's a numbers game, so that's why we highlight these. But so that's the shove a quote of the week: Nick Bond, bottom feeder. But Nick Bond's crushing the land business because he's embracing massive action with lots of mailers. That's exactly right. Okay, we're gonna do a uh, we're gonna do a giveaway here real quick. We're gonna do a a signed copy of Dirt Rich. All right. Okay. And here we go. You ready? I got my, my names in the hat. Okay, okay, slow it down there. Uh, Michael, can you see that? You Michael, that. Michael Tapetta. I was going to put glasses on for that one. Sorry about that. Michael Tapetta, I believe, is a toolkit guy. So, Michael, you will get a signed copy of Dirt Rich from Mark Bidolsky. Awesome. Awesome. And one thing before the toast, I do want to say, uh, Wes, you know, at the last boot camp, uh, Kyle Nab was there and you uh, gave some talk. I don't know if you talked to him private or not, but he definitely inspired him. Some of the things you said, he went into the airport before he left boot camp and he had made an eight, I think it was an $8,000 sale, which was, you know, attributed to some of the advice that you had given to him. So, you know, just want to publicly recognize that, that, that was, that was awesome. Yeah, we, he, uh, we had dinner with him. We were, uh, we were in the, in the buffet. We were at the buffet. <laughs> And he was up ahead of us, and uh, Shannon saw him. He's, he's in our class. Should we go say hi? Yeah, let's go say hi. And then, hey, you want to eat with us? So we hung out, and, you know, it's a buffet, man. I went back, like, 27 times. I got seven <laughs> kids. I got I to gotta get my money's worth, man. <laughs> Covered it in my pockets, and, you know. So, yeah, we hung out at dinner, and uh, we talked. And, I mean, you know, he's an inspiration. I mean, he's young. He's getting after it. So, you know, that's cool. Yeah, no, we have some good people, such as your son, young, young, that are hungry, going to take this business and redefine their lives right at the outset, right? It's just, you know, why wait? If you have the ability and the and the motivation, right, and the inclination, soon is better than later, for sure. Yeah. Amen. Should I bring, should I bring him up? Yeah, let's bring him up. Let's see, Matt Forbes coming back up for the uh, final toast. And I'm going to do the outro so we can do the swivel in reverse. We're all in swivel chairs. We're all going to swivel. Uh, are you in a swivel chair, Matt? This is my you – you guys don't even know this, but up until last week I was in my chair in my home office and, 
uh, you know, for everyone who hasn't met me, uh, I'm a slightly large person and uh, <laughs> the chair had bent and it had bent and it had bent to the point of I was sitting like this, but I was straight up in the chair. It was completely cockeyed. So I finally <laughs> bought a new chair and it's meant for really fat people. And I'm like, this is great. And then I put it together and it's the exact same insides as all the other chairs. So, oh, geez. That's okay. I uh, I got the warranty on it, so I will just return it and get all my money back, like I did with the first chair after about a half an you know, <laughs> couple of months. But Matt, so. but Matt, the simple question is, does your chair swivel? That's oh, it's yeah, yeah. But then I run into oh. this, and then it's uh, it's ugly. No, oh, can I say? So uh, who's gonna you got you got one? Or should we uh, have you got a toast? You ready, Matt, uh, Scott? Or do you want me to? What do you, what do you got? I, mean, I can do it. It's West, want, you got a favorite. I, you gonna favorite Wes. vote? I think Wes. Wes, let's do it. Got a toast you can throw our way for the final uh, hoorah? He he has one. Look at him. Look at him. He's he's yeah. a perky blinders, a peaky blinders. Yeah, the peaky blinders. What? Yeah, what was that? It was like, uh, <laughs> uh, what was it? It was like may may you be dead like thirty minutes before the devil knows that you're gone or something like that. What was it? Oh, that sounds very light. You remember that one? The weird toast. Okay. <laughs> it's a good point. Yeah, okay. it was a good point. But hey, you know, we'll just stick with that. May may you be in heaven thirty minutes before the devil knows that you're even gone. Amen. Awesome. <laughs> Cheers, Matt. Cheers. Thank you, Wes. Thank you so much for being here. It was a pleasure. Hope to see you soon. Yeah, I, I'm going to come to Scottsdale, so I'll see you. Awesome. Uh, in, in August. Phenomenal. Yeah. You ready for the outro? <laughs> ready. Here we go. Let's do it. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Wes. Scott, thank you. Let's go. Reverse swivel. Oh, man. I'm going to end the meeting. <laughs> Thanks,